it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Great Scott! Here we are with chapter 10, lesson number one. We're on the circuit, Sandy. We're in the circles chapter. That is the square. That is not a circle. Okay. Silly Sandy. So lesson number one, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Yes, Sandy, that is a circle. So lesson number one. Here's a circle that I drew earlier. We have our x-axis and our y-axis, and the center of the circle is the origin. It's the point zero, zero. Let's take a point on that circle. I'm gonna call it point P. And if I draw a line from the origin to point P, but the wink, then that is clearly the radius. So OP has length R, where R is the radius of the circle. Obviously point P, it's got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. We came along some number, we went up some number. And how could you work out the length of this radius? What would you use, Mediha? Brilliant, you could just use Pythagoras. Because we came along some X value, we went up some Y value. And if we do that, we formed a right angle triangle. So you can say that X squared plus y squared would equal r squared, and that would be the length of OP. Really, a circle that has the center as the origin is always going to be of the form x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. Let's try some examples then. So write down the center and the radius of each circle. So we've got x squared plus y squared equals 81. Remember, if it's of that form, the center is 0, 0, and r is the radius. So with this here, x squared plus y squared is 81. First of all, think about the center. It is of the form x squared plus y squared equals a number, so you know the center is just 0, 0. This number that it equals is r squared, so you know r squared is 81. How could you then work out r? Absar. Brilliant, you root it, so r is the square root of 81, meaning then that r would be 9 units. Just make sure you don't put in the positive and the negative there. It's obviously just positive 9, you wouldn't get the negative length for the radius. This next one, we've got x squared equals 8 minus y squared. Grace, what do you have to do first? Rearrange it, perfect. So you need x squared plus y squared equals a number. So if you add y squared to both sides, or move that y squared over, then you would get x squared plus y squared equals eight. From there then, you know the center is going to be zero, zero, because it's of the form x squared plus y squared equals your r squared. And as I just said, r squared is what it's equal to. It's telling you it's eight, so you know r squared is eight. How could you then work out r? Abs r, brilliant, you can root it. You're a master at this. You wouldn't just leave it as root eight. What you can then do is you could split that up. So root eight, if you work with thirds, that would become root four times root two. So four times two is eight. And then doing that, well, square root of four is two. So that would be two root two units. And that would be what your radius is. If you ever get a third, you're best simplifying it. After that, example C, 4x squared plus 4y squared equals 100. What would you have to do first of all? Good, divide every single term by four. Dividing by four, you'd have x squared plus y squared equals 25. The center then, you know because it's x squared plus y squared, the center is going to be a zero, a zero. And how would you work out r then? Good, we well, you know r squared would equal 25. So to get r, you square root that, meaning the radius is just going to be five units. That is how you would do those ones. Example number two, write down the equation of the circle with center O, which is the origin, which is the point zero, zero, and it's got a radius two root three. So from there, well, you know that because you've got the center as the origin, the origin's the center, you know it's going to be of the form x squared plus y squared equals r squared. We know what r is, so now we'd have to find out what r squared is going to be. So to get r squared, well, you can square the two root three. Squaring two root three means you've got two root three times two root three. To do that, I had to multiply the whole numbers first of all, so two times two would give you four. After that, root three times root three would give you root nine. Square root of nine is three. So you'd have four times three, giving you 12, meaning that r squared would equal 12. From there, as I said, the origin is the center, so the equation of the circle will be x squared plus y squared equals, and we know r squared is 12, so x squared plus y squared would equal 12. That is how you would do that one. 
Oh yeah. Example three, you write down the equation of the circle with center O, where again, that's the origin, is zero, zero, passing through the point negative three, five, which is point P. For this one, you may wish to go off to the side and imagine that if you go off to the side and you think about it or you draw it, you would have your circle, you know, the origin is the center, and you will have this point negative three, five that is on your circle. The circle's passing through that point. From that, well, you know the origin, you know point P, so now you'd have to work out what R is. You need to work out the length of this radius in order to get R squared. Well, if you think about it, you can do that two different ways. Either you can think, right, well, I'm coming back three units, I'm going up five units, so that length's three, that length is five, so you can just use Pythagoras with r squared, three squared plus five squared. What other people like to do is use the distance formula because you've got the two points, you've got zero, zero, you've got negative three, five, so you can then say that r squared, or op squared, would equal, and then it's negative three take away zero, all squared, plus five take away zero, all squared. Either way, you'll get negative three squared plus five squared, which will give you 34 you know then that r squared would equal 34. From there, make sure you don't go on and say what r is. You don't need to work out the length of the radius because doing this, well, you've just worked out what r squared is going to be and r squared is what you need. So you can just stop there and you can say that the equation then will be x squared plus y squared equals and r squared is 34, so it's just equal to 34. So don't square root it and then square it again. Okay, you're just wanting r squared. Example number four, prove that the point four negative three lies on that circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. So how could you prove that the point lies on the circle? HSD Liam, what do you think? Ah, oh, what a guy, brilliant. You would substitute the values in to the equation of the circle. So you know in this point, you've got the x coordinate, you've got the y coordinate, so you know x is four, you know y is negative three. So if you sub them into this equation, we'll just take the left-hand side first of all. So as HSD Liam says, you would have x squared plus y squared, which would equal four squared plus negative three squared. Work that out and you get 16 plus nine, which will then give you 25. And obviously we're wanting it to equal 25. So you can say the point satisfies the equation of the circle, meaning the point lies on the circle because you got 25 and you wanted to get 25. They're equal, so it satisfies that equation. If it didn't, say you worked that out and you got something else like 17. Obviously 17 is not equal to 25, so you can say 17 is not equal to 25, so the point does not satisfy the equation of the circle. Okay, here though, we want 25, that's what we get, so that's absolutely fine, the point lies on the circle. Example number five. A circle has equation x squared plus y squared equals 16. Find the equation of the circle with the same center, but three times the radius. First of all, what would the center of this circle be, Erin? Good, it's just zero, zero, because you've got x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So you know the center is zero, zero. If we want wanting the equation of the other circle uh, that is the has the same center, but three times the radius, well, first of all, we need to know the radius of this circle. So we know that r squared would equal 16. r then would equal the square root of 16, which is going to be four units. So you know the radius of this first circle is four units. If you have a circle that's three times the size, well, the radius will be three times the size, so it will be three times four, which gives you 12, meaning then x squared plus y squared would equal 12 squared on this larger circle. So you can say then that x squared plus y squared equals 144. Example six, prove that the point A, three and negative one lies inside the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25. So how would you do this one? For this, you're wanting to take these two values. You've got the x coordinate, you've got the y coordinate, so we've got our x and y values. So you can say x is three and y is negative one. If you work out the left-hand side, x squared plus y squared, well, you would get three squared plus negative one squared, 
which is obviously 9 add 1, which is 10. If you think about that then, well, you've got 10 here, but you know that x squared plus y squared would equal r squared, and r squared would equal 25. Here, though, if, we, if we've only got 10, you can say that 10 is obviously less than 25, and if you get a number that's less than uh, what you're wanting here, you can say that the point will lie inside the circle. Remember for the last example we had it so it was equal 25 and if 25 equals 25 it lies on the circle and if you get the number that's less than that well, it will lie inside the circle. The same way if you've got a number bigger than 25 well that would lie outside the circle. So that is how you would do that one. You're getting 10 which is less than 25 so the point will lie inside the circle. Last one, example number seven. You've got the point A5, and it lies on the circle. X squared plus Y squared equals 41. So find the value or values of A. So how would you do this one? You're wanting to find the value of A if this point lies on the circle. Grace, perfect. Yes, you can sub in this value of A and the value uh, 5. So you sub in your X and your Y, and you know that would equal 41. So put x equals a and y equals 5 into the equation of the circle. So x squared plus y squared equals 41. From there, replace x with a, replace y with 5. So you've got a squared plus 5 squared is 41. Meaning then that a squared plus 25 would equal 41. You want to find out a, so subtract 25 from both sides. So a squared would be 16. And how would you get a? Square root it. Perfect. So what would you get? 4. Good. Or... Negative 4, good. So when you take the square root this time, you could say that it's the square root of 16, but it'd be positive or negative. So you get plus or minus 4. Remember, it's not the radius you're working out here, so you can take the negative. It's the value of a that uh, you are working out. So because you get plus and minus 4, remember a is the x-coordinate of the point that lies on the circle so because you get positive 4 and negative 4 you know there's two points that will lie on the circle so, so this is the circle from the question we've got x squared plus y squared is 41 but we know the point positive 4 5 would lie on the circle just here and we also know the point negative 4 5 would lie on the circle so you get these two points and it will look something like that Try these questions on your own, see how you get on. It's the Maths and Action book, page 168, exercise 1. Just finding the equation of the circle with the origin as the centre. Good luck!